Well, hello, I want to thank you for joining me today as we talk about Viking's most popular river cruise, the 15 day Grand European Tour, which travels from Amsterdam to Budapest or the reverse. And today we're going to give you some tips on how to choose the best river cruise at the best price without having to search the internet or thumb through catalogs or call random people at an 800 number. We're going to give you a virtual tour of this wonderful way to travel. We also want to talk about who these cruises are for and who they're not for to make sure it's the best fit for you. So we like to say that these cruises are great for active, educational, they're very culturally enriching cruises that really help people expand their minds, their, their trips. A lot of these cities haven't been on people's bucket list. They don't know maybe what there is to see, or maybe some of you have traveled there for work in the past and you wanna see it with the luxury and the guidance of a river cruise experience. And this is a wonderful way to do it. Who they're not for are those who like to have C days, SEA days versus SEE days. They're very enriching. We're usually sailing overnight and in port during the day. There's a lot to see. So it's not as much as those that like to have the uh, scenic sailing cruising where you sit up, uh, on the boat and just read a book as the scenery passes by going to be very active. You're going to enjoy exploring these wonderful little towns. And Viking also has a policy where they don't allow children under 18. So you're traveling with like-minded guests who are mature, active adults who really enjoy the camaraderie of like-minded travelers, as well as really learning a lot about the history and culture that you're sailing through. This is a personal testimony from one of our clients who said, this was one of the best vacations of our, our lives. She'd never taken a cruise and finally was able to um, do it, was convinced that it would be a good thing to do. After 48 years of marriage, they took this cruise and that's what she told her husband on the return. So uh, this is the kind of experience I want you to have. And some of that just comes from really understanding what is special about river cruising. And so I'm going to turn off my camera now so you can actually see the full view of these images. And this is what I like to say is quintessential river cruising. Imagine a beautiful day on the river sailing and having this beautiful scenery. You've got the um, highways of the old world for lack of a better way of saying it. And the communities are built up along the river. So you're gonna have this incredible scenery, just these small towns, lovely hillsides, villages that you sail past and incredible, um, communication from your program director telling you what you're seeing as you're sailing by and it's just a really wonderful uh, memory if you can have a perfect day like this this will carry you through those cold winter days or those seasons where you haven't had a chance to take a vacation in a while and that's the experience we want all of our guests to have now, the 15-day Grand European, as I mentioned, is Amsterdam to Budapest or the reverse. We do overnight in Vienna, so you get some extended time there, and we also overnight in Budapest as well. So you can go either direction. Usually the dots mean an overnight. In Amsterdam, we depart late as you're sailing uh, from that city, from that direction, Amsterdam to Budapest, but we also... Uh, when you're going the other direction, we will be departing the next day. So technically it isn't overnight there, but it's not going to include a tour. We really encourage you to spend some extra time getting in to the city early. It allows you to adjust the jet lag. You get to know some fellow travelers. You get a chance to really explore the city on your own. And with Vikings, pre and post cruise packages, there's always going to be a city tour. If there's not one included with your cruise, You'll have your daily breakfasts, your uh, transfers to and from the ship and the airport as needed, and then the services of a Viking host. So it's a really great way to get started. You've, had, you've flown all night. It's a nice way to get acclimated to the time change and get um, a little extra time in the city that you've gone to visit. So we're gonna do an overview of this wonderful city of Amsterdam. It's just a beautiful city, lots of canals. You can see the history here with these uh, small houses right there along the water. The Dutch were very frugal. They were taxed on the footprint of the house, not on the height. And so you can see that the houses were built 
very narrow and had many stories and windows. You'll see that little protrusion on the top of this house right here. That is a pulley uh, way they put a pulley system so they could get the goods or the furniture or whatever up to the higher levels. And it's just a charming city to sail through. If you can get here uh, early enough where you can take a canal cruise, I really recommend that. Sailing through these canals, the little archways are lit up in the late afternoon and twilight. And it's just beautiful seeing the city by river. The canals are beautiful, lots of flowers everywhere, the floating flower markets, you'll get a chance to see those. And bicycles are everywhere in Amsterdam, so they do have the right of way, so make sure you watch out for those and enjoy this city. Uh, it's built basically on concentric circles from, you know, pretty much the port of the train station and going out from there. So having the afternoon to just either take the tram or be able to uh, walk around and get some off the beaten path, off the tourist areas will really give you a great view of the city. Now, Amsterdam has more museums per square mile than any other place in the world. And there are uh, so many great things to see. Of course, the Anne Frank House is here, the Van Gogh Museum, the Rijksmuseum with the Dutch masters, and there's a diamond museum, a music museum, just so many things that you'll enjoy spending your time here. If you get here early enough in March or April, or even the first week or so of May, I encourage you to take a trip to Kuchenhof Gardens the largest exporter of flowering bulbs in the world. And it is a sight to behold for sure. Uh, if you love flowers, definitely make sure you see Amsterdam during that period. Now, our next stop is going to be Kinderdijk. And Kinderdijk is a beautiful place of 19th, 18th century windmills. And this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So you'll get a chance to actually get inside and see how these windmills work, see how they actually lived, how they made the living areas basically formed around the framework of these uh, octagonal walls. And it's fascinating. And Viking also has something called privileged access. So you'll have a short excursion, excuse me, a short excursion included in every port of call, but you also have the option for other optional excursions as well. And they're separated into three different categories, local life, working world, and privileged access. So local life, of course, how people make their living, uh, how they live, and just a lot of times we'll have a home visit, for instance, and be able to sit down with a local and they'll tell you what their daily life is like. Working world is you may go to a cheese factory and learn how cheese is made, or a, a farm and see how they make their living from either growing tulips in this case, or maybe it's the Mercedes-Benz Museum or something like that. And you'll get a chance to actually be in the economy driving forces of these uh, different businesses. And then privileged access are those tours that allow the Viking connections and relationships that they've had for over 23 years to really shine. And in Kinderdijk, you'll get to experience uh, traveling on a barge. It's over 125 years old. It's been fully restored and you'll be taken to a mill, a uh, windmill where the, the family is actually working the mill and you'll see what their daily life is like, get a chance to tour in a private setting. And it's only for Viking guests. So look on your My Viking journey after you book your cruise and just see all the great options. They'll be divided into levels of difficulty, length of time, as well as the um, whether there's a snack or meal included as well. So make sure you check that out after you get your deposit on your cruise and you'll be able to see what options are available in your My Viking Journey site. Our next stop is going to be Cologne. And this is a wonderful town. It was badly damaged during the war, except for the Dom Cathedral, which you see there at the end of that bridge, which is actually a uh, train bridge. But notice at the base of the train bridge, you'll see a ship. That's not a Viking ship, but that's the example of where our ships get to dock. Viking owns most of the docking locations in Europe. That gives us great access where you can get on and off the ship, have easy access to walk around this town, explore to your heart's content, and take some time to do some additional shore excursions here. It's a very pedestrian-friendly town. 
You'll be able to uh, do lots of shopping after your included tour. And one of the things that you might want to do that are that is a privilege to access is the tour, Top of Cologne tour, where you'll get to actually take an excavation elevator on the outside of the building. Of course, it's very exclusive. Not many people can fit in there, but you'll get a chance to go to the top of Cologne, be able to see inside the cathedral from an amazing bird's eye view, as well as incredible views of the town. Of course, if you're afraid of tight heights, this would not be a good uh, thing for you. And you do need to be fit. There are very narrow walkways and stairs, et cetera, of uh, areas that you'll have to climb. But what an amazing experience to be able to talk with the restoration crew, learn how they're continually finding treasures. This uh, town was built on Roman ruins. And so in addition to the cathedral being restored, you know, basically year round, you'll be able to learn about the new findings that they've had and explore the cathedral in a way few people ever get to. The other thing that's very popular is a pub crawl. And uh, one of the beers that Cologne is famous for is Kolsch flavor, Kolsch beer. And you'll notice it's small glasses, about seven ounces, very low in effervescence. So if you enjoy doing that, trying some different foods, these are unique pubs that uh, make the beer that they sell. And you will get a chance to do some great exploring here in the evening with some Viking guides who can show you all the inner workings of Cologne at night. Now, we do sail away after midnight here, so you have plenty of time to come back to the ship, enjoy a meal, and go out again and explore, because there is so much to see here. There's a fragrance museum. This is where Eau de Cologne uh, got its start, the water of Cologne, and you'll get to tour the Free Museum, as well as a chocolate museum, take some great souvenirs home, and uh, lots to do with the stop in Cologne. Our next stop is the Middle Rhine, where we're going to be cruising this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Again, you can just see how beautiful and calm it is to sail the Rhine River. There are so many castles along this river. And back in the day, the lords of the manor were uh, charged to keep the riverways free of debris, and they could in turn charge for doing so. But of course, there was abuses with that, and that's where a lot of the stories come from with the robber barons, etc. And as you're doing your scenic sailing, your program director is going to tell you all about the history of these castles as you sail. So it's a very interesting day. We had a wonderful uh, demonstration of apple strudel while we were sailing. So we got a chance to have some tea, some apple strudel, learn something about how to create that at home, as well as enjoy some incredible history as we were sailing along the Middle Rhine. Then we go to the wonderful slopes of the Koblenz area. This is the Aaron Breitstein Fortress, which you can take a tour there. There's a tram that will take you up to the uh, fortress and you'll be able to see some great views of the Moselle and Rhine rivers. But if you can, and if you have the mobility, make sure you tour Marksburg Castle. This castle was never conquered, and it has some commanding views of the Rhine. It is uh, just an amazing castle. It's got a full kitchen where they cook a whole cow and a ballroom. It's got torture chamber and um, the Gimbal collection, which is uh, the knight's armory through the ages. Just an amazing uh, castle with lots of history but dates back to the 13th century and the pictures you'll be able to take from up here are just going to be so memorable. Beautiful drive up a kind of a steep mountain but really a special and memorable day. There's there are no elevators here so make sure that you are fit to travel. The ground is you know it's an old castle so there are some cobblestones some maybe some even pavement but definitely something I think you'll really enjoy visiting. Now on your scenic cruising, you'll enjoy the Aquavit Terrace. This is a patented area of the ship. You can imagine just sitting there in a rocking chair, taking pictures, enjoying the scenic sailing, having a bite of lunch or getting up early, enjoying the sunrise with a croissant and a cup of tea or coffee. It is a really special area of the ship that is so popular and of course brings outside dining to an extra level that you don't get even 
with the great views you have in the restaurant. The next day is Miltenburg, Germany. So I want to point out that as you're sailing from Amsterdam to Budapest, you'll see Miltenburg. If you're going Budapest to Amsterdam, you'll not see Miltenburg, you'll see Verton. So look on the uh, cruise uh, directory as on the biking website. You can switch the uh, destinations at the top left and it'll give you uh, details about how this varies just slightly on depending on which direction you go. But Miltenburg is a lovely city, very uh, charming town, a lot of half timbered houses, and in its old town area. And you can just see the cobblestone streets and all the beautiful balconies with flowers in it. It is just a charming town that you'll really enjoy. We'll get an included tour of this town. And then once you're back on board, we'll actually bring a glass blower on board to demonstrate the trade. Uh, lots of great glass blowing in Miltonburg. It's known for that. So take a a little bit of bubble wrap in your suitcase so you can bring back one of those treasures, maybe a glass Christmas ornament or vinegar and oil set or something unique that will be a treasure from your stop here. Then we head to Würzburg and Würzburg is known for the Marienburg Fortress, as you see here. And our tour will actually take us to the Würzburg uh, Bishop's Residence. And this is one of Germany's most ornate palaces. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site as well. So back in the day when the church and the state were linked, the Prince Bishop had a lot of power, authority, and money at his disposal to make an incredible residence for himself. So here is the uh, Four Seasons uh, by Tiapolo. The gardens are beautiful. And I'd recommend that if you are going to do an optional tour, this is a great place to do the Romantic Road. Rottenburg Obertalper. It's one of Germany's last remaining wild medieval towns, very lovingly preserved. And I think you'll find it just really special and you'll still get to do uh, the Bishop's residence as well. Bamberg is on the Main Danube Canal and known for wonderful music as well as lots of beer options. There are some great optional excursions here, but your included tour will take you to the medieval old town here. That um, building and the, in the middle of the bridge is actually their city hall. And Bamberg is also known for smoke flavored beer. So if you wanna do as the locals and have a try, this is a great place to do that. And then we head to Nuremberg. So Nuremberg is of course very famous, not only as a medieval city, and it's been uh, well restored, but of course it was nearly destroyed during World War II. And um, the city walls stretch about three miles. There are 80 watchtowers in this city. So you'll get a chance to visit Nuremberg through history, which is your included tour. There is a Nuremberg and World War II optional excursion. And a lot of times we'll have couples that will split up here. Some really love the history and some love uh, the uh, the medieval focus of the town. So great Christmas markets. This has been uh, a real favorite of our guests and a wonderful Christmas market tour. They're famous for the nutcrackers, the toy trains, and lots of wonderful uh, souvenirs that you can purchase here. Then we go to Regensburg. What a beautiful city, just storybook type village. There is a 12th century stone bridge that you see here. And to the left of that is an icon you don't want to miss. It's the Alt Vostkutcher or Old Sausage Kitchen, which is the oldest continuously operating restaurant in the world, dating back to 1130 AD. So you can get a plate full of these sausages on pewter plates and some mustard, sit out there on the pier, on the quay, and just enjoy some people watching and a real historic meal from centuries ago. Then Passau is a wonderful city in um, Germany. It is where the Danube becomes the blue Danube. As you can see there in the center, uh, the water is a little more blue. And it's the convergence of three rivers, the Inn, the Ilts, and the Danube. And known for, because of its low point, when there are high rains, they have had uh, flooding and they've been fighting that for years, but it has, uh, as our guide told us, it has been mother's nature's way of them cleaning out their basements. 
This here is the conical tower. So back, I believe it was in 2013, they had the highest flood uh, waters in 500 years, and it came to about a foot below this conical tower there. So you could imagine they repaint the buildings and they remark the lines of the height of the, the water levels each time there is flooding. But the onion domed uh, towers here are actually St. Stephen's Cathedral. And if you have a chance to get a concert in here, it is lovely. There are over 17,000 pipes. It's one of the largest cathedral pipe organs in the world. And the acoustics are incredible here. So enjoy your day of Passau. And then if you can, uh, take a tour um, around and get an organ recital as well. Now from here, we can do some great optional excursions. Salzburg highlights is one of Austria's most picturesque cities. And of course, the Sound of Music was filmed here, but it's also the birthplace of Mozart. So an enjoyable drive. Make sure you stay awake because the scenery is incredible as you take that journey into Salzburg and you'll have an included tour as well as time to wander around the city and shop and enjoy. You can also do an optional tour to uh, Nischwenstein Castle, which is where Disney kind of got the inspiration for Cinderella's Castle. A beautiful tour into the Bavarian countryside and a great day to tour uh, another castle in this area that's very famous. Next, we go to Melk, and Melk is famous for this beautiful abbey. If you are sailing on the river at sunset with this, uh, when sun is setting and you're seeing this abbey, it is a picture in your mind that you will not forget. It is elegant and amazing and just a stunning display of architecture. I love the outside of the building, but the inside is just as beautiful as you can see here. Stunning uh, chapel, the staircase here is steep, beautiful. There's a mirror at the bottom, so you can actually look all the way up and see the incredible um, design and architecture here. But I would have to say my favorite is the library. What an amazing display of books. Over a thousand books here, uh, really a repository of amazing, um, just, just amazing literature and handwritten by the monks. And those are just incredible. Get your camera ready, take pictures. There is just so much to see here. You can see the incredible frescoes. The volumes that are here are just, um, you just walk in amazement at how much there is, um, how much wealth was invested in books back in the day before the printing press. This was, you know, worth more than land in a lot of cases because it would take these monks so many years to actually create these volumes and do the incredible painting and artwork on each of these pages. So enjoy your stay at Milk. And one thing I would say is when you're finished, we do have our motor coaches that follow the ships, but if you have the energy and you like to explore, take the stairway down to uh, the town and just enjoy some shopping. They have some wonderful little gifts that you can bring back, little bottles of shops or maybe some fruit jams because this is a beautiful Vakau Valley with, which grows amazing um, apricots, et cetera. And you'll just enjoy touring the town. It's just a small town and do something off the beaten path and enjoy exploring on your own as well. Then we're going to have a afternoon of scenic cruising down the Vakau Valley. You can see how beautiful it is, different from the Rhine. Not as many castles here, but lots of vineyards and orchards and uh, beautiful mountains. Just a wonderful afternoon of relaxing, catching your breath before we stop on to the next town, which is Krems and Gottfried Abbey is here. And this is a working abbey. They are, uh, they'll give you a tour of the abbey as well as a video. You'll get to see how the abbey, which is still an active one, is in operation today, how they uh, farm the land here, great wine. In fact, we had apricot schnapps or nectar that you could choose from when we arrived at the, at the abbey and learned a lot about this beautiful and old abbey that has incredible views of the Beckow Valley as well. So it is 
a beautiful afternoon um, during the 12th century. This was a, an abbey that was even more important than Vienna because uh, it had um, access to grain and salt and um, iron. It was very important for the wine trade here. And if you enjoy uh, touring wineries, you can actually take a tour and learn about the, the Wachau wine region, which is very, very popular. Just 3% of Austrian wine is uh, exported here because they really love their wines and they keep it a lot of their uh, white wines here for uh, their own use. Next, we go to Vienna. What a beautiful city, Paris of the East, with these incredible uh, museums and castles, uh, the city of waltzes as it's known for, which uh, the classical music and of Mozart and Strauss uh, composed many of their famous pieces here. Our included tour will be the Vienna City Tour where we'll see the highlights of all these elegant and cultural um, venues. And our tour was just wonderful. We saw the Habsburg Castle and enjoyed learning a lot about the history here of Maria Theresa. Actually got to see the Lipizzan, one of the Lipizzan mares, the, and they're full. The actual stallions were out on holiday, but of course, if you can, you'll enjoy uh, getting a back behind the scenes tour of the Lipizzan stallions. That's a wonderful opportunity that Viking gives to our guests. So if they're in, uh, town at the time. You'll know that from your My Viking journey. You'll be able to get a backstage tour, learn all about how they train these incredible horses and do those dancing performances, which are really special. Lots of great tours here, optional tours as well. For instance, going to Schönbrunn Palace, you'll really want to do that. If the Vienna Boys Choir is in town, you can do an optional backstage experience with them, learn about how they live and they're touring, get a little mini concert, learn how they are, how they practice and what their daily life is like. So lots of great experiences in Vienna. I'm glad we have an overnight here to be able to do all those things. But one thing you cannot miss is the incredible cafes here. They are palatial and definitely want you to um, not get Starbucks in this area, do Cafe Vienna. The soccer tour, as you see here, is very famous. It's a chocolate cake with a little thin layer of apricot jam that really took um, Vienna by storm back when it was created. And you can also have it shipped home in these nice little wooden boxes and experience a little bit of Vienna even back when you arrive back home. So here is the Shunban Palace. And as I was talking about, you could. this is where you could uh, learn about the Vienna Boys Choir, choir as well. And then the evening doing a Mozart and Strauss concert is a must. So this, we did this and it was lovely just to hear a variety of music. We had some vocals some dancing, a little bit of, um, of uh, stringed pieces as well, just focusing on the Mozart and Strauss um, contribution basically to the world of music. It was a wonderful way to end the night. And of course, driving through Vienna in the evening was beautiful as well. Wonderful way to end a remarkable day there. And then we get to Budapest. What an incredible city. The Danube actually divides the city into the Buddha and the Pesh side. So we'll start in Pesh in our included tour. We'll see Andrasi Avenue, which is the Champs-Élysées of Budapest. The Hungarian State Opera is here and Heroes Hero Square has some great views honoring the Magyar chieftains which founded the city. Then we end in Buda and we'll visit the castle district which has fishermen, Sebastian uh, and San Mateus Church there in the background with the red tiled roofs. Fisherman Sebastian just gives you some amazing views of the river. You can pick up a sandwich or do some ice cream here. It's delicious and of course if you want to experience the thermal baths, these date back to Roman times. The healing waters of the Sejni thermal baths or uh, Hotel Gellert has some as well. And rub elbows with the locals. This is where you'll see the, the Hungarian people passing their time, enjoying the day. There are, you know, chess boards in the water. So you'll see people playing chess. It's just a wonderful experience. Bring your swimsuit and Viking will provide the robe and slippers and transportation and give you this experience where you can have the really where spa, the spa trend originated from this area. 
lots of optional excursions you can do. Hungarian Horseman is very popular where you can see the, um, it's called the Pusta Horsemanship Show and learn how these cowboys do these acrobatics and how it's been um, used for centuries really to create uh, safety, to uh, be able to avoid invaders, how they train these